Hey, how's it going? This is going to be the Psycho Farm Journal Club, where I review important papers in psychiatry and add my own stupid beliefs and commentary to it. I'm going to review what I think are important papers and then try to add commentary to make it so it's not boring. So I'm not going to do things like talk about me like, oh, the p-value is portal 5, um, because I find that stuff not fun. So today, the paper we're going to be reviewing is the Delayed Onset Hypothesis of Antipsychotic Action, published in 2003 in the Archives of General Psychiatry. So let's get to it. So as we learned in another video, before the 1950s, there were no antipsychotics, and treatment was really difficult and sometimes even dangerous. It wasn't until 1952 when chlorpromazine, or Thorazine, was discovered that we had treatments for schizophrenia. And then in the 60s, it was proposed that the effect was due to the effects on the monoaminergic system, which to us today sounds too vague to really mean anything, but we have to remember, science kind of goes slowly. And then in the 70s, it was found that the antipsychotics displaced dopamine from its receptor, and the affinity that it would do that correlated with the clinical potency of the drug. So today, it's now generally accepted that D2 blockade is the central way that these drugs work. And in the 90s and before, it was believed that there was a big gap between when you started the medication and when it worked. Similar to today, how the whole, you know, it takes SSRIs four to six weeks, there's a, a gap between starting treatment and then the therapeutic effect. So the phrase delayed onset for antipsychotics was coined in the 1970s and became a well-established kind of fact of the field. And the hypothesis there was that there was a two to three week delay between the start of medications and the onset of therapeutic benefits. And we have to remember that theories develop based on what is believed clinically happens. So people were looking for a reason as to why this gap existed, and they developed the depolarization block theory. So even though they knew that dopamine blockade was well established in the first few days, they needed a reason to explain why they didn't see effects right away. So the belief there was that repeated administration of antipsychotic drugs eventually caused dopaminergic neurons to undergo activation of firing, and then the inactivation of the firing was what caused the therapeutic effect, rather than the dopamine blockade itself. So what this paper kind of set out to do was to challenge this delayed onset theory that it took two to four weeks for the effect of the drug and to see what actually happened clinically in terms of the when you started the drug and the effect. So the two competing hypotheses they were looking to test, which you can see here visually, were the delayed onset hypothesis, which is that after the drug reaches therapeutic level, there's a period of delay before the response begins, proposed to be two to three weeks. And then what this paper is putting forth is the early onset hypothesis which is that the effect starts simultaneously once the drug reaches therapeutic levels in the first few days. And then with any continuous process, the effect accumulates over time and then eventually plateaus. So both hypotheses would explain why it takes several weeks to achieve you know, a substantial level of response. But the early onset hypothesis is saying that the uh, effect is occurring mostly in the beginning. So to test these two competing hypotheses, they did a meta-analysis of studies that use the BPRS, or just the thought subcomponent of the BPRS, or the PAN score, or just the positive symptom subscales. So the BPRS is the Brief Psychiatric Rating Scale, and this is one of the oldest and most widely used scales to measure psychotic symptoms, and it was first published in 1962. And it consists of 18 different factors, which you can see here, and they're all ranked one to seven. The PANS is the Positive and Negative Syndrome Scale, which is used to measure symptom severity of patients with schizophrenia, and it's kind of considered the gold standard for assessments of psychotic behavior, and it's widely used in antipsychotic studies. And as we can see, it's broken up into three different subsections. There's the positive scale, the negative scale, and the general psychopathology scale. So what they did was they looked at double mass studies of antipsychotics and schizophrenia or schizoaffective during the first four weeks of treatment, and they limit it to people who are taking medications, Thorazine, Haldol, Risperdal, or Zyprexa. So some statistics nerd did some fancy mathematics to combine the 42 uh, different studies, and they came out with the percentage change in symptoms that took place each week. So looking at this picture on the left side, we see the mean overall clinical improvement, and then on the right side, we see the mean change in core psychotic symptoms. So the y-axis is improvement percentage, and just a heads up, they're different in the two different graphs. So to bluntly summarize what we're seeing is we see about a 15% change in the first week, about like an 8% change in the second week, and then the third and fourth week about like a 5% change. So what they found was that most of the change happens in the first two weeks, and then there's still some smaller amount of change in the next two weeks. So these results were not consistent with what was at the time the widely cited delayed onset hypothesis. So at the time, they thought that clinical improvement in the first two weeks was attributed to the improvement in nonspecific symptoms like anxiety and agitation, rather than a change in the core psychotic symptoms. What's considered the therapeutic effect of the quote-unquote milieu. 
But what this showed was that the psychotic symptoms are actually the ones that make the major improvement in the first two weeks. So this should make you wonder why had the concept of delayed onset been so accepted? And this is probably a confusion between the onset of action versus the time required to achieve a given level of improvement. So while it is true that it does take a little bit of time to see the significant improvement, I think another important point is how much what we believe influences what we see. I feel like studies like this emphasize the importance of believing what's in front of our eyes and not letting our preconceived notions paint our reality. As psychiatric or medical providers, it's important to have a good grounding on all the science and facts of how these things work. But it's also important that we approach our own belief systems with a healthy level of skepticism. So the big takeaway from this study is that antipsychotic action starts early after drug administration and that the effects of the drug are cumulative. So there's no notable delay in the onset of action of antipsychotics. Um, the improvement occurs most rapidly in the first two weeks and then slowly reaches a plateau. So again, this gives us a sneak peek into how the science works. So because people believe that the onset was delayed, scientists were looking for biological events that were absent in the first few weeks and that appeared later. So you get a theory like the depolarization block of dopamine that's built on really unsolid grounding. So now how do I make sense of the fact that the drug works right away, but it still takes a few weeks for the full effect? In the paper, they mentioned Kapur and Miller saying it's akin to psychological extinction or an unlearning process that starts immediately and then accumulates over time. So in another one of my videos, I talk about how I conceptualize the dysfunction that occurs with dopamine and schizophrenia. So thinking about it through that lens. So as soon as you start taking the antipsychotic, right away, the problem of perception is fixed. But because the perceptual problem has been going on for so long, this person has integrated a lot of weird and strange beliefs. So the person still has all these strange beliefs, and in order for these strange beliefs to go away, they really need time for evidence against these beliefs to build up so that the beliefs can go away. So said another way, when someone is in a psychotic state, their hardware isn't working correctly. And because the hardware is not working correctly, they build all this really buggy, questionable software. When the person starts the antipsychotic, the hardware is fixed right away, but it takes time for the buggy software to get fixed. So to summarize, this paper did not find evidence of what at the time was believed to be the delayed onset hypothesis of antipsychotics, but found robust evidence to support the early onset hypothesis. So what they showed was that there's no notable delay in onset of effect, there's more improvement in the first week, and then a gradual improvement towards a plateau. Thanks for watching. All right, if you found this helpful, you can consider supporting me on Patreon. Um, there I have question reviews where I kind of just go over board questions and add stupid commentary. All right, thanks.